Today's lesson is on squares of sums and differences. This is one of our special products. It's a set of binomials that follow specific patterns. Um, one of the patterns is square of a sum. The other pattern is a square of a difference. You're going to see that it follows a formula, which is a faster way to multiply these binomials, these particular binomials together. It is another option on top of FOIL distributive property in the box method, if you can remember them. So we have two formulas. We have the square of a sum. And that's when I have two numbers. We're just going to represent variables. Um, they are general letters, A plus B. This can represent anything, x plus 5, 2p plus 3, 4 plus 5x, there are all sorts of things. But when we have a square of a sum, we've got a sum that's being squared. There's a pattern that follows. You can write this out as a plus b times a plus b because we know when we're squaring something, we are taking that base and multiplying it by itself two times. Now the formula that follows is a squared. This means the first term, a, is being squared by itself plus 2ab. That means 2 times whatever a is times whatever b is plus b squared. This is the last term, b, being squared. It is a faster way of doing the distributive property because remember, a times a is a squared. a times b plus b times a is essentially a times b plus a times b. So we're going to have two of the a times b's plus b squared. The other formula we have is called a square of a difference. It is essentially the same idea as a square of a sum, but instead of adding, we've got subtracting. So we have a minus b squared. This is the same thing as a minus b times a minus b. We've got our base being multiplied by itself two times, and it fits into the pattern of a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. You can see it's exactly the same as the previous formula, but instead of a plus, we have a minus here. Now remember, the hardest thing about this is a is a number or a variable, b is a number or a variable. This minus here is being taken into account with this minus. So don't make this b a negative because that will change your answer completely. Now let's look at an example. We have x minus 6 squared. This is the same thing as x minus 6 times x minus 6. So we could sit and foil it out or box, prop or box method, distributive property, but we can also use the formula. Remember, because this is a minus, it's going to be a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So my first hint would be to write out what is a, what is b. a is x because that's our first term and b is 6, that's our second term. Remember we are not taking into account the minus because it's a minus b, not a and negative b. So we have a, we have b. Let's fill it into the formula. If we have a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, and my a is x, we have x squared minus 2, a is x, so 2 times x, b is 6, so times 6, plus b, which is 6 squared. Well, we can't simplify x squared at all, so we're going to leave that by itself. And then we have x squared minus 2 times 6 is 12, so 12x, plus 6 squared is 36. 
And there's my final answer. Looking at another problem, we have c plus 3 squared. This is our square of a sum because of the plus sign. So we're using the formula a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now again, I recommend that you write out what is your a, what's your b. My a is that first term, so it's going to be c. My b is the second term, and it's going to be 3. Remember, we're not taking into account the sign, just the variable or the number. So let's plug it in. a squared, that's going to be c squared, plus 2. My a is c, my b is 3. So 2 times c times 3, plus my b is 3, so 3 squared. Simplifying this out, we have c squared plus 2 times 3, which is 6c, plus 3 squared, which is 9. And there's my final answer, c squared plus 6c plus 9. Looking at a little bit of a harder example, we have 3p plus 4 squared. Again, because it's a plus sign, we're going to be using the formula a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. But now when we look at what is a and what is b, we have to be very careful because our a now is 3p and our b is 4. So when we're multiplying this out, we just have to be careful with this a. So it's a squared, that means it's 3p being squared plus 2 times 3p times b, which is 4, plus b squared. So that's going to be 4 squared. Now be careful, 3p squared, that's the same thing as 3p times 3p. We're going to take our squared and distribute it to the 3 and to the p. So we're left with 3 squared, which is 9, p squared, which is p squared, so 9p squared, plus 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 4 is 24, so plus 24p plus 4 squared, which is 16. So my final answer is 9p squared plus 24p plus 16. Looking at one last example, I want you to pause the video, try this one on your own. Okay, hopefully you've tried it on your own, and you know that it's a minus sign, so we have a square of a difference, so that's a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. We have our a, which is 4x, not just 4, not just x, 4x, and b, which is 5, not negative 5. We don't take into account the sign. So a squared, a is 4x, that's being squared, minus 2 times a, which is 4x, times b, which is 5, plus b squared, that's 5 squared. 4x squared, that's 4 squared times x squared. 4 squared is 16, x squared is x squared, so 16x squared minus 2 times 4 is 8, 8 times 5 is 40, so minus 40x plus 5 squared, which is 25. Now remember, if this doesn't totally resonate with you, if you don't understand this completely, you can always use one of your other methods of multiplying binomials. But this is a shortcut, it's a special product, and it is important to understand that there are specific patterns that can be applied to terms like 4x minus 5 squared, where it's the same term being multiplied two times.